all your postings about you know, giving a testimony when I first you know, read it. It's a wonderful idea to reach a lot of people. I felt the Lord, you know, speak to my heart. He's like, you got a testimony. You got a story. And my first response was like, come on, Lord, don't. Because uh, I know where he was leading with me because I apologize for the emotion. Uh, that's all I've done in the past eight, nine months has been extra emotion. What the Lord's done. He's been so good to me. So blessed with God's people. He's been trying to get me to a place. You know, this past Christmas, I finally surrendered to the call that he had on my life of ministry. After many, many years of running. And he's opened so many doors. You know, when you go through that process, you know, that sanctification process, you know, it really never ends. We become less of ourselves and more like our Lord and Savior. You know, like Paul said, you know, cried out, old wretched man that I am. I don't know how many times this year that I, that question of why me, Lord? You know, why me? Why, why did you call me? You know, what have I done? You know, first of all, that you even just love me. And then for you to call me to do your work, I don't understand it. But there's so many people far more qualified far better speakers than I'll ever be but this process you know why me is something that's haunted me from the first time I preached my first message was on January 2nd this year but about five or six weeks ago I was scheduled to preach at the church that the Lord's led us to and it's been such a blessing, so encouraged. But uh, they've got me teaching Sunday school now, and you know I thank them for that. You know I've probably learned more than I, I could ever teach these. They're just great people of God. I'm truly blessed there. But after that, after Sunday school, I just went downstairs to the church to get alone with the Lord and to pray, like I always try to do, and for Him just anoint me. Bring that anointing. Because I can't do it without it. There's nothing in me that can do this. But I was just, as I began praying, I was, I came back upstairs and I sat down and I felt more different than I'd ever felt in my life. It's never felt like me being up preaching. You know, I know, you know, it's all the more. But I, I began speaking to him again. I'm like, Lord, you know, what is this feeling? What is this? You either giving me an extra measure of your anointing this morning, or I'm not ready to pass that one. He was like, you know, I don't know if I can handle it. You know, he was with me. It was a great service. You know, he moved. One point of the message brought up Elijah and Elisha. The point where Elijah, that great man of God from the beginning, miracles were being done. But he got to a point. All that that he had seen that the Lord had done with Jezebel, one woman, sent him running. Right after that great showdown, you know, on the mountain where the fire fell. And he had that little pity party of, you know, it's just me. I'm the only one left, Lord. You know, and when they find me, they're going to kill me. You know, the Lord told him, let him know, I'm not done with you yet. You go back to where I want you. And he told him that he's going to anoint the new king. He's going to anoint Elisha. During that message, you know, I told him I'm not comparing myself to anybody. He's like, but right now, I'm in that role of Elisha. I need an Elijah. And I thank God there's Elijahs in my life you know, that I can look to, you know, that they can help guide me. I was like, but you see so many of the Elijahs today, the preachers, you know, they're quitting left and right churches are shutting down. It's such a sad time, but you know, God's still on the throne. He still has his people. He has a remnant out there. But I was like, you know, where's the Elisha's going to be if the Elijah's, you know, just give up? But after that service, my mother-in-law was there, and she came up and she hugged me, and she's like, before you mentioned Elijah and Elisha, the Lord showed me that you've been given a double portion. 
in your ministry. And then she also told me, you know, much is given, much is required. You know, any other time I'd have thought she was just being nice. But I told her, I was like, I don't know about that double portion. I was like, but there was a feeling that I can't explain that happened this morning. But that same question of why me, I began struggling once again. Why me, Lord? I've done nothing to deserve this. And I felt led to study the anointing. And some things happened that the Lord got my attention that week. But that Wednesday, I went on to church. And another minister there, she was talking. She began preaching on, she said that the Lord laid on her heart this message of Elijah and Elisha. Like, when I brought it out, and I was like, well, he's already preached Sunday. I can't do it. Wednesday, she's like, there's another part. You know, she was preaching on, you know, sanctification. Not, you know, it's not taught or preached in many churches anymore. That being separate from the world. Letting the, you know, being led by the Spirit. And then she mentions Elisha saying, you know, I want a double portion. The tears just began rolling. In our church, you know, the altars are always open. I thank God for that. If the official invitation wasn't given, I just I just stood there. I didn't go. The church closed down, they dismissed in a word of prayer, and I felt the Lord speak to my heart. And I've got something for you. If you want it, don't walk out the doors until you get it. My response to that was like, I really messed things up. You know, here I just preached Sunday and church is over. If I go up to them and say, I need prayer, they're going to think I'm the biggest sinner in the world. You know, I began talking to her. And I just stopped her and said, oh, I want you to pray for me. She didn't understand me at first. She's like, no, you just didn't remember me in prayer too. You know, I need you to pray now. The Lord's got something for me. I don't really understand it. I don't know what it is, but I want it. To her and our pastor, you know, they prayed for me. And I, I left there that evening feeling the same way I did Sunday, and I thank you for that. But that question of why me? Why me? Still haunted me. And I went on to work that night. I began talking to the Lord. My lunch break, I just hopped in my truck and began driving. And I cried out to the Lord, and I was like, God, you know my you know, I love you, and I want to do everything, everything you want me to do. But if you could just tell me why. Because, you know, there's people that's never walked away from you like I did. I was a teenager in my early 20s, and you know, I turned my back on I didn't want to be his friend anymore. But he never gave up on me. When I shut the door, he started knocking. I thank God he never quit knocking. But I finally... Let him back into my life. The world don't know what they're missing. They have no idea. It's such a dark, cold, hurtful world. And the Lord, Lord Jesus, He's the only answer we have. We'll have to get a hold of that. But He didn't answer that question right away. In our Sunday school class, we've been in the book of Acts for several weeks now he said the question of why me has to stop time of why me's over he said you need to ask the question that Saul asked on the road to Damascus and that question is in Acts chapter 9 I believe it's verse 6 and part of it says what would you have me do so why me stop every day I have to ask what do you want me to do Lord we all have to be there if we're going to reach the law, if we're going to get our loved ones in, we got to take this serious. Time for games is over. Time for playing church is over. You know, he, he didn't answer that question. He reminded me. You know, it says the Holy Spirit will remind you of things. Several weeks before that, I listened to a minister. And he got preaching on Peter. It's about the verse where, you know, the Lord came to him and said, you know, Satan's desired to have it. Tried, but I prayed for you that your faith fell not. 
that the reason Satan wanted to try Peter, and he brought up when he was in the boat and saw the Lord walking on the water, and he bid him become to him, said at that moment, Satan knew that if Peter ever got his heart right, if he ever got to the place where it was, that the Lord wanted him, there was nothing, nothing that the Lord wouldn't ask him to do that he wouldn't do. And that's where I want to be. And I'm getting there. And I've got room to grow. You know, I face some opposition because I didn't go to school. And I tell them, anybody that asks me anymore, I just tell them I'm in the Holy Ghost Academy. Uh, he's teaching me, and I'm growing. But he's also told me that I, I must remain humble through this whole thing, because I know who I am. I know who I was. And the moment that I start taking credit for it, he'll shut it down. Because it's all his work. It's him. But I was feeling pretty good because I knew I was growing. I got a hold of something. And I asked him, I was like, Lord, can I go and tell him that, you know, I'm no longer a freshman in the Holy Ghost Academy. I moved up another grade level. You know, and some people don't think the Lord speaks to us. You know, he speaks to us in many different ways. But, you know, I know his voice. I know when he speaks to my heart and when he shows you things. But what I heard was, you know, it kind of took me back. Oh. And at least tell them it's a new semester, a new quarter. Response again, no. That won't grow. You're giving me a double portion. But what is it? What I heard, it blessed my heart more than any of that. And I know I don't graduate, so I make it home to heaven. He told me day two. He told me day two. And it blessed me. Some people might think only oh, day two. But if coming out of day one, going into day two feels this good, and he's done this much for me, how much better is three? Day four, day five, when we finally make it home, I have no idea. We can try to imagine how great it's going to be. But I can't wait. I can't wait to see my Savior's face. Thank you for all that he's done, for saving me. Know this. this past Sunday I was at a homecoming I've never experienced this before you know people come up to the altar for prayer but they did things a little different people came up one by one and we have no idea in churches what people are going for the second day and just to hear and you say you know pray for I know the Lord's with you. He can please you to just pray for you. And I never prayed so hard or loud in my life, and I'm not a loud person. Most of my life has been shy. You know, change only the Lord can make. But you know, feeling that fret. You know, it's gonna take all of us. All of us. And I heard a preacher say the day of the superstar preacher, so we all have have a job to do. And we all have to get there. And we get self out of the way. And we ask him every day, what would you have me do? And we just be obedient and willing. And we serve him with all of our hearts. I just love him.